Yo, what's up and welcome to my third video on this channel. If you want to do something like this, just keep watching because I'm gonna explain it to you today. So as you can see, that's the original scene. Here in rendered mode, you can see the materials, which I'm going to explain to you afterwards and how we can do the dynamic texturing of the object. Um, but let's get started. So just like the other two effects that I explained to you, this effect is also based on the vertex weight proximity modifier. So the first thing to do is add a sphere or a cube or an object of your liking and subdivide it a few times so you get a pretty dense mesh. After that, just animate your sphere, make it rotate a little bit, just make the scene a little bit more interesting. When you're ready with your animation, add a path and make it wrap around your object. You can do it how you like it. In my case, I just selected some edge loops in edit mode, duplicated them and made them an own selection and then converted it into a path. Don't forget to parent your path to your object. So select your path, then shift click, select your object, control P and parent it with keep transform. Give it a little bit of depth and animate your path with the start and end mapping in your path properties. When your path is wrapped around your object, select your sphere or the cube or the object and go into edit mode, select all vertices and assign them to a new vertex group. After that, go into modifiers and add the vertex weight proximity modifier. Under vertex group, select your vertex group and under target object, just select your path that you just created. Next very important step is to set your geometry to edge or face. Vertex won't work in this case. You already can see some weight painted on your object. Next step for this is set your fall off to smooth and play around with the lowest and highest values. You can see my lowest value is 0.01 to make it as sharp as possible as you can see and to make afterwards the stitching as sharp as possible too. And don't worry if the vertices or the weight paint looks a little bit edgy or unsexy. You won't see this afterwards in the cloth simulation. So next most important thing to do is add a cloth modifier. Go into the physics properties and copy my settings or set them how you like it. So I got 10 quality steps and the stiffness and damping settings I think they are the default. Under pressure check pressure and put the pressure on a high number such as 8. Also check custom value so target volume at 1 and pressure scale at 3. Just play around how you like it. It depends very on your idea of the simulation. So next important step under shape pin group select your vertex group that you previously created and under shrinking factor set a very low negative value to make the cloth a little bit pop out of its hole. So as you can see this is the normal shape of my sphere and if I turn on the cloth simulation with the shrinking factor it makes the cloth pop out a little bit more of its basic shape and also gives your object where the seam is a little bit more of the laced up or tied up look that you're going for. That's everything that you need in the cloth properties. Uh, turn off the gravity of course. Next step, just bake your cloth simulation and wait until it's finished and afterwards apply a subdivision surface modifier to a mesh to make it even look better. So as we got our scene fully simulated, we just need to apply our textures. And for the dynamic texturing of your object, you also need a little bit of geometry nodes. So select your object, go into geometry nodes and hit the plus button. Very simple, you just need a capture attribute node, plug the value into the value and the attribute into the attribute and that's everything that you need. Now create a new material and go into the shading tab. As you can see I got two principal PSCF, so I got two materials. The green one is a top texture from Quixel Megascans and the second one is just a principal PSCF with a metallic look. And I plugged both into a mix shader and the mix shader into the material output. And for the mix factor, we want to create an attribute node and plug that into the color ramp to make some more detailed adjustments to it. In your attributes node, you gotta set your type to geometry and under name, write a word of your liking. Now go into your modifiers properties and under geometry nodes, hit the little button next to value. Select your vertex group and under output properties, type in the same word that you called your attributes name. In my case, it's weight. So type in weight if you did the same as me and now you'll see the magic happen. Because of the little geometry node and the attributes node in our shading, Blender mixes our two textures based on the weight paint. So I think that was it. If you made it to the end, just render your animation, post it on Instagram and tag me or send it to me. I really want to see what your outcome is and how my teaching is working. Okay, so have a great day and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see some more exciting tutorials like this one. Bye.